I think today is absolutely a unique opportunity to get so many stakeholders in the one room to debate the future of dispute resolution. I mean, what really struck me was the quality of the outputs and the innovative thought. I think two things struck me from today's discussions. One was that actually in dispute resolution, we already have the tools to do things differently but people are not embracing those tools. So people are still worried about using mediation, using arbitration, using other forms of alternative dispute resolution. And what really came out of today was there's a real opportunity for people to be confident and, and to use these tools. But the other thing that struck me today was that we all that we have to continue on this journey of innovation. Um, I think the landscape for dispute resolution will be unrecognisable over the next five to ten years. I think technology is going to be a huge disruptor for this industry, uh, from small claims all the way up to the largest commercial disputes. And I think we need to fully embrace that. As a starting point, I, I don't think we have bad access to justice in Hong Kong when we're talking about commercial disputes. I think we're in a relatively good place. I think it's important to recognize that. So I, I think what, what we're really focusing on is, is improvements that we can make in order to maintain Hong Kong's position in, in this sphere, continue uh, to attract in corporations internationally or, or just cross-border uh, transactions that are looking for governing laws in their contracts. Uh, and dispute resolution mechanisms. Again, there's a lot of focus on the dispute resolution once a dispute has arisen, but I think it's also important to focus on prior to the dispute arising, what measures can we take to, to minimize that and understand it, um, but also in the event that they do, uh, for whatever reason the parties uh, do fall apart, that there is a, a place that they can come and resolve it, I guess in the in the sphere of essentially uh, access to justice, which is the rule of law and certainty in Hong Kong, which it provides. In terms of what, who should be doing what, I think education is, is clear. That's come out loud and clear from today. It's just continuing education, using the tools that are available, but also looking at new tools for educating, embracing technology. So that's really what I would like to see more of is, is sharing of stories via social media, YouTube, Facebook, etc. That will come in. And, and I think it, it requires all stakeholders to understand that and accept that technology is coming and things will change and, and continue to, to look at what other jurisdictions are doing, look at other industries, what, how they are using and implementing technology to improve uh, access. Uh, and education. I was privy to the uh, results from the previous uh, GBC conferences and our results are more or less similar. I think the, the key things that to take away is that education is very important. We need to change the mindset. The government has to do a lot more and we need support from the judiciary to assist us to promote mediation and uh, to get and encourage other people, that particularly the parties, to go into a, a non-litigious mode. Uh, in fact, uh, about 15 years ago, there was a very uh, important mediation advocate, uh, Hazel Gen, who was in Hong Kong. And um, she's now um, knighted as Dame Hazel Gen. And, and she said one thing, she says, look, Rather than say, why can we not mediate this case? Perhaps the mindset should be, why are we still litigating when we can actually use other different, uh, very effective uh, methods to resolve disputes? So it's a change of mindset. When will that come about? Don't know. I hope, I hope we, we can change that mindset soon. <laughs>